Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you degree the cams is you want to make sure you set top dead center exactly um, to true top dead center. And the way we found top dead center using these gauges um, is we, on this one we're using cylinder number two because on cylinder one we were having some issues with the um, gauge catching on um, on one of the um, one of the valves one of the top of the valves so it wasn't allowing it to travel um, easily up and down so if you use cylinder number two it's the same exact thing you just find top dead center for cylinder number two you set up your um, your indicators right here the middle one is to help you find top dead center and what we did is we set up the degree wheel and this degree wheel comes with a little washer that allows it to secure onto um, your crank once you set up the degree wheel you want to use a piece of wire what I did, I took a coat hanger and I cut a piece of it, secured it with a bolt and bent it down and that's my indicator for my degree wheel. You'll set it exactly where top dead center is after, after you find top dead center on the gauge. So what we did is we turned the crank on this H22, it's um, counterclockwise, like you guys know. So you turn it and you watch this dial here. And as you're watching it, you want to, right there, it's indicating that the piston is moving up. I'm sorry, right there, it's indicating that it's moving down. So the piston is on its way down. And there that's reached the bottom uh, of its travel. And then as you'll be able to see once it moves, it's on its way up. And there we're at top dead center. Okay. Now we're already zeroed in because we had already found top dead center. There's two ways you can do this. You can use a piston stop and then you screw it into the spark plug um, hole. And once your piston hits the stop, you check on your degree wheel at what degree you're at. And then you rotate the crank the other way clockwise and where it stops you know you write down the, the degree of where that stops and then you find um, the average so you want to add both of them both degrees that you found the first one going counterclockwise and the second one going counterclockwise and then you divide by two and that's exactly where top dead center is so then you adjust your wheel and to top dead center where your where your pointer is going to point directly at top dead center so like i said we had already found it but just to show you guys we're gonna if you look at the dial coming to top dead center here and that should be top dead center. If you look at the dial it's at zero. If you look down here at the degree wheel it's also at zero. Okay so once you have found top dead center you 
I want to make sure that you zero out the intake and the exhaust um, gauges. So top that center here, we're at zero. Here, you want to zero it out, which we already did. We're at zero. And then we're at zero here. So what I mean is that once you're at top dead center here, you know, these gauges, whenever you, you set them up, this, this face moves. So maybe when, when I first set it up, it was like this, which that doesn't matter at that point. But after I find top dead center here, then you zero out this gauge. And what I mean by zeroing it out, you turn it so the zero is on the longer arm of the indicator and then that's zeroed out there okay so once once you get done with that step and you've zeroed both out then you want to look at your cam card so all cams come with a card showing you various measurements and they are used to degree cam so it's information that you want to use when you're degreeing your cams so for these cams what uh, and these cams are from Crower what these indicate is that on the exhaust side I mean, I'm sorry, on the intake side and on the exhaust side, whenever the, the tap it lift is at 0 0.5, 0 0.05, I'm sorry, which I'm, I'll show you here. And the exhaust one is the one opening first. So if you look here, as this indicator moves, it means that the valve is opening. So here you want to make sure you get it right on on 50 and if you look at each increment each line is 0 0.001 so here at 50 would mean that it's at 0 0.050 inches so once you're there you want to look at your degree wheel and you want to see where you're at so here using this degree wheel we are before bottom dead center so we're at BBDC and this is how you count them 10 20 30 40 45 46 we're 47 degrees before top dead center I'm sorry 47 degrees before bottom dead center so you want to Write that down, write it down on a piece of paper, and notate that you're at 47 degrees BBDC. After, you've done, after you have that measurement, you want to continue rotating the crankshaft. Until the valve closes again. As you can see, it's going backwards now, it's closing. And you want to be at the same place, which is point zero five zero, which is 50 here on the, on the face of the indicator, which is right there. And that means that you're at point zero five zero on the closing end of your valve. So here, you look at your degree wheel and you've already passed top dead center. So you are at ATDC after top dead center and you just count how many degrees? 10, 15 degrees. So then you write down 15 degrees after top dead center.
Now what you do is you take the first measurement and you add the second measurement, which was 15. So our first measurement was 47. 47. Second measurement was 15. 15. So 47 plus 15 is 62. And then you add 180. The reason you add 180 is because it's 180 degrees from top dead center to bottom dead center. And you're trying to find the middle measurement, which um, it's called the center, the lobe center line is what you're trying to find. So 47 plus 15 is 62 plus 180 is 242, okay? So you take 242 and you divide that by two. So 242 divided by two is 140, uh, 121 degrees. So you take 121 degrees and you want to subtract the second measurement which was 15 which was 15 and the reason you're subtracting the second measurement is because you're supposed to subtract the second measurement if your second measurement is after top dead center, okay? In some engines, you might have your second measurement be before top dead center. In that case, you would add the second measurement instead of subtract it. So here we're gonna subtract it. So we have 121 minus 15, which gives you 106. 106, yeah. And that is the center line for the exhaust camshaft. Now if we look at if you look at your cam specs. Cam specs, it should give you the center line of the intake and the center line of your exhaust. For this cam it only gives you the center line of the intake, but another formula is that if you take both center lines and you divide it and you add them and then divide it by two, you get the lobe separation. So we have lobe separation of 106 here with a center line, an intake center line of 102. So now we're going to do the intake and that should be at 102 if our reading. What you want to do on the intake side is the same exact thing that you did on the exhaust side. It doesn't matter which one you start with, you're going to have to do the same thing. So once you see that the valve is opening, now you see movement, you want to stop it right at 50, which that's it right there. And that's 0 0.050 of lift on that valve and that's when it's starting to open. So then you check your degree wheel and you are before top dead center by 13 degrees. So you want to write that down on a piece of paper that you are 13 before top dead center. Now you continue to rotate the crank until the valve starts to close and you'll see the dial start going backwards right there. It means that it's already closing and you want to stop at 0 0.050 before it closes completely, which will be right here. 
and I went past it. I'm gonna go back a little bit, which you should really just go forward. We're gonna pick up after it starts going back. Now you see the dial going back. It means that it's closing now. And you wanna stop right at 50 again on its way back, which is coming up here, which is right there. You stop and that is at 0 .050 on the opposite side of the lobe. And you look at your degree wheel and you are after bottom dead center by 10, 20, 30, five degrees. So then what you wanna do is you take note of 35 degrees after bottom dead center. So you take these two numbers and add them together which gives you 48 degrees plus 180 degrees. And that's just part of the formula. And what the 180 is, is the amount of degrees from top dead center to bottom dead center. So this gives you 228 degrees. And you divide that by two, it gives you 114. 114 degrees and then what you want to do is you subtract your first measurement that you got the measurement you got before top dead center okay so 114 minus 13 gives you 101 degrees 101 degrees now what you do with this number, 101 degrees is the center lobe, the center line of the lobe on the camshaft. So this is for intake. For exhaust we got 106 degrees. If you add these together, they are 200 Seven. Seven, and then you divide these by two, which gives you 103.5. And this is 103.5 of lobe separation, okay? So if you look at the specs that came on the cam card, you'll notice that we were not far off. Center line, it's, it, it's advertised the intake center line of 102 degrees with a lobe separation of 106. And what we ended up with was center line, intake center line of 101 with a lobe separation of 103.5. And the reason our lobe separation ended up at 103.5 is because we degreed the center line of the exhaust at 106 degrees. And the formula to find the center line is you add these two and then you divide by two and that's the center line. Okay? So if you, if you wanna make any adjustments and you want to increase the lobe separation or decrease the lobe separation, that's where you use your adjustable cam gears to adjust either you add or subtract to get to the degrees necessary uh, for your application. So the way we adjusted them on the exhaust side, we went minus uh, one. And on the intake side, we went plus one. Yeah, about one and a half. One and a half, yeah. 
And also make sure when you're doing this, you lock your BTEC. We didn't show that on the beginning, but on uh, BTEC engines, you have to have BTEC locked so that it gives you the right measurements. So in order to make sure you get the, the right readings for the correct load, which would be you want the exhaust, I mean, I'm mean i sorry, the VTEC load to be red, you, you do have to lock it out. And if you look, if you're looking at your head, before you install your, your cams and your camshafts and your dials, indicators, what you want to do is you remove the plugs that are on your head on the exhaust side and on the intake side. You can't really see them. Let me see if I can show them. Yeah, they're not going to be shown. There's two Allen head plugs that go here. So um, I'll show a picture of them in a minute. There's two Allen head plugs. You remove them. And on the top side of your head, there is um, two pins that hold the rocker um, shaft. The rocker shaft in the head, okay? And those connect to your rockers. So what you want to do is the kit comes with these pins to lock out VTEC. Okay, now these pins are the, the ones that are in there, the OEM pins, and you, as you can see, they're, they're short. And once, once the oil pressure gets to a, a certain um, degree, it shifts these pins over, and that's what locks in VTEC when you get into VTEC. So what the pins do that come with this kit is essentially you're locking VTEC in um, and it stays locked in while you do these readings. Once you're done, you slide those pins out, put these back in, uh, and then you know your, your cams are degreed, you're ready to go. You just get everything uh, put back together. Yeah, it's more complicated than, I guess it, we make, we're making it sound more complicated than what it actually is. We're making this video because we check online how to do it and everybody will tell you something different. So this is the way that we found that actually works. It gives you accurate numbers. And uh, we were actually pretty close. Like you can see, we didn't actually have to adjust much. Just in the intake one and a half and the exhaust negative one. The way you make these adjustments, you loosen up the screws here, and then you're able to move the cam without actually moving the pulley, the cam gear. And uh, to double check whatever adjustments you make, you gotta redo the whole process and see what numbers you actually end up with. But I mean, once you do it once, it gets easier and, you know, we're not, we're not experts, but we're actually, we got some decent numbers. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully help somebody out.